it's my business. It's, it's what I put into it. It has nothing to do with anyone else. You know what I mean? And if I can continue to grow it on getting these treatments, you know, why not? I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't, you know, continue to hustle through it. And I'm definitely not a person that can like sit back and take time off. I just can't. I, I go crazy. I probably, <laughs> I probably get depressed and sad and, and that's no way to, to go through cancer treatment. Welcome to the Plan B CRNA podcast. I'm your host, Bobby Jones, and I'm so excited that you're here. The Plan B CRNA podcast is the only show made specifically for nurse anesthetists who are exploring options outside of their traditional career paths. This is the place to expand your mind and your goals as we uncover new ways to produce side income together. Join me for some honest, unscripted discussions with other CRNAs who are transforming their financial lives. This episode is brought to you by On Call Capital. On Call Capital is dedicated to educating CRNAs and other healthcare providers about investing outside of the traditional stock market. On Call Capital also provides opportunities for you, yes, you, to create passive income and generational wealth while also lowering your taxable income through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. If you haven't hit subscribe yet, make sure you do that right now so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks so much for joining me today. And now on with the show. Welcome to another Provider Spotlight episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. Our guest today is a CRNA who opened her own med spa only to be diagnosed with breast cancer one month later. Crystal Alber has worked in healthcare for nearly 20 years, both as a critical care nurse and nurse anesthesiologist. Despite working full-time and loving her career field, she just wanted more, more knowledge, more experiences, and something different. As a lover of aesthetics, it was an easy transition to open up her own medical spa, aesthetically pleasing, in the Grove of St. Louis. Go Cardinals! Yeah. Uh, then, of course, the cancer diagnosis came along, but she's not one to be deterred. Crystal never stopped working during her predicted 18-month-long cancer treatments. She's worked full-time as a CRNA and treated clients before and after chemotherapy. Her passion for her new business is what kept her going when things got tough. To quote Crystal, starting a business from scratch and watching it grow into something so beautiful and rewarding is the best feeling in the world. I can't wait to dive more into this story, Crystal. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bobby. So, uh, you know, I, I've been looking forward to this conversation for a while. I, I've been really inspired by your story. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to get right into it here. I, I know that there are so many CRNAs out there that, that get this feeling that they want to do something outside of anesthesia. What was that experience like for you? And how did you eventually settle on the idea of a med spa? I think this is quite a common occurrence with CRNAs. I know, you know, when we were all back working in the ICU, we were all striving to go to anesthesia school. We wanted, you know, that next level. And then now I've been doing anesthesia for 10 years and I just had like this itch, like I wanted to do something. I didn't want to stop doing anesthesia, but I wanted to learn something new. I wanted to do something different. Um, I originally looked into um, going back to school, getting a terminal degree, but really, you know, that's not going to benefit me in my anesthesia career. It's a lot of money. Um, and I'm a lover of aesthetics. I've been doing all the things since I was 32. And I was introduced to Kelly Hermans, who is a, also a CRNA, that which um, she opened her own me medical spa and she has a training academy. So she trains a ton of CRNAs who um, want to become injectors. So I was lucky enough to get paired up with her, love her, she's such a doll. Um, and she trained me and there's quite a process. I mean, there's a lot to do in aesthetics and in, with injecting. Um, it's a lot of on the job training, which I'm not fortunate enough to have because I work full time doing anesthesia. So I just had to pay out of pocket to get trained by a lot of different people, a lot of different places. Um, and then I opened my own aesthetics practice uh, a year ago, right in the middle of the pandemic. Okay. Yeah. That's, I opened my business, uh, just as the pandemic got started. So, uh, I, I have a, an idea of what that's like, <laughs> Yeah. but, uh, Crazy. but yeah, so, you know, you mentioned your training there and, and going to 
to get training at other places. Did did you have to travel very far outside of St. Louis to do so? And, and what did that look like when you did that? So I started into this journey, I think I established my business in 2016 and I did several trainings here in St. Louis, um, but I never felt uh, competent enough to really be an injector. I wanted more hands-on training and more hands-on knowledge. So I found Kelly and I traveled in Michigan um, to train with her. And since then, I, um, I have consultants here, uh, local in the area that I bring in for training. And we also have, you know, um, there's webinars now, which are really nice that they didn't really have pre-COVID. So there's a lot of training you can do from home without having to travel. So that's been nice too. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's uh, I, I think one of the benefits of the pandemic is you know everything has been forced to go online um so that that's certainly made education a lot easier uh in that sense but uh so then now what was it like getting started because you mentioned you, you were kind of getting started in 2016 but you didn't really open up a, a place until last year um did you have a business plan for that and if so how did that change at all so i wasn't really sure. I just wanted to get trained and be, be able to do it. And then I just kind of took baby steps. I really didn't, I put my own money into training. Um, but then I just built my business in baby steps. I would make a little bit of money. First, I just did mobile injecting. So I would inject friends and family at houses. I would do Botox parties. Um, I would make a little bit of money and then I would spend a little bit, bit of the money and just kind of build the business that way. And then I wanted an office space. So I reached out to an esthetician um, who I just love. And we shared an office space for about seven months. And it was just one office, one treatment bed for two people. So we, were, we could never work at the same time. And it was just a conflict of interest really often. So we were like, we need a bigger space. So we moved to our location now um, January of 2021. And we have a three treatment room medical spa with a waiting room and a, a formal product display area. And we've got our own little fancy, our fancy place. Cool. So you're partnered with other people then to, to have this we, location. We are business partners, but we have separate businesses. And we okay. provide separate, we provide separate services. So we, we really complement each other well. Very cool. Very mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. It's, it's nice when you can get that synergy going on and yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've spoken with some other folks about that and, and it does matter who you share a space with for sure. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. So um, well, and, and you mentioned um, Kelly Herman being possibly one of your mentors, did you have any other mentors and, and how was that relationship with regards to, to helping you get started? I'd have to say Kelly was the best mentor. She not only physically trained me on uh, aesthetic technique, she kind of walked you through the steps of how to open your own medical spa. There's a lot of hoops to jump through. There's a lot of this, that, and the other, and restrictions and regulations. And she was just kind of able to guide me through that whole process. Because that was my biggest holdup in the beginning. It's like, I want to do this, but how? How do I do this? How do I make this happen? So she um, had just started her training academy right about the time um, I trained with her. So she's been instrumental in my entire aesthetics career. Now, when it comes down to the cancer diagnosis happening a month after you've opened this location, um, you know, a lot of people, nobody would have faulted you for saying, you know what, I got to focus on me and, and it's time to, to step back from this. Why did you decide to take the other route and say, you know what, no, I'm going to press forward with this. What, what was driving you at that point and what continues to drive you now? Well, I just started, so Jody and I had just started sharing an office in June of 2020. And I was just, you know, making bigger strides and we had all these Botox parties planned. And, and I remember I was diagnosed in, excuse me. Yeah, we started in June, I was diagnosed in July. 
and it was like our first Botox party together. And I pulled her aside afterwards and I was like, I have to tell you something. It's kind of a bummer. Um, it's not going to affect our relationship, but you know, I have breast cancer and, but we're still going to keep working and doing our thing. And it, it's just kind of what got me through. Um, it's my business. It's, it's what I put into it. It has nothing to do with anyone else. You know what I mean? And if I can continue to grow it on getting these treatments, you know, why not? I wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't, you know, continue to hustle through it. And I'm definitely not a person that can like sit back and take time off. I just can't. I, I go crazy. I probably, <laughs> I probably get depressed and sad and, and that's no way to, to go through cancer treatment. Yeah, no, I understand that completely. And it, it is something that I, I can see that you certainly do have a fire about you and that this is, is one of those drivers for you. And sometimes going through difficult times, it helps to have that goal in mind, um, you know, or, or that, that goal that you're chasing actively uh, to, to kind of keep your eye on the prize a little bit. But um, now you're one of the, the founding members of the CRNA Moms Facebook page as well. Um, yep. how, how important has that support been in your journey? So it's really interesting you say that because I started CRNA Moms when my daughter was four or six months old and she just turned eight and it is a force. There's like 8,500 members um, of amazing supportive moms in there. Um, but through the CRNA Moms group is how I met Kelly. It's how I met um, all these other women that I've, you know, collaborated with over the years. Um, it's how I met Ellen and Lacey, who we also have a podcast with, Scrub Caps and Sippy Cups. So it's been, um, it's really changed my life now that I think about it. I mean, it's changed everything. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to change the name of the, uh, the podcast once your kids get older? Well, and that's the thing, like, because we named it, and we had a hard time naming it. We could not come come together on anything. But the the range of women in the group are, I mean, there's women with kids in college. There's women with grandkids. The, the age range is very diverse. And I love that for so many reasons. Sometimes people are saying, I think we should have a separate group for, you know, the grandmas or a separate group for the people, school age kids or a separate group for the kids in college. But that's how us younger moms are learning is from these experienced moms who have gone through all the trials and tribulations of having a teenager, of having a toddler, of having, you know, watching your kids have kids. It's been, it's been a really productive and helpful group. Yeah. And now we haven't actually talked much about your family, your husband, and and so how has this new adventure affected them? So the well, the cancer treatment and the medical spa were like about the same time. So another driving force for me was I didn't want my daughter to see me like down and out and like you know kicking dirt. I wanted her to see me like pick myself up and just keep going, even though I didn't have hair and even though I didn't feel well. Um, and my husband has been an amazing support. I couldn't have done either this battle or built this business without his help. This place I'm in now, he hung everything that needed to be hung, any electrical wiring that needed to be done, anything that needed to be assembled. I mean, he physically like put his blood, sweat and tears into this place. So, I mean, I couldn't, couldn't do it without him and at home I mean he really took over he I I haven't done laundry in like a year I just like I could I was tired and I didn't have yeah. to you know because I, I was still working in two full-time jobs at that so when I would get home I would just crash and and he just took over never complained that's amazing, amazing. That's, that's really amazing. I have to say, I, as somebody who has no uh, real mechanical abilities at all, I'm always in awe of people who can, who can go in and really help with construction and, and mm -hmm. electrical stuff and, you know, do, doing all those kinds of things. Uh, you know, we all have our own talents, but uh, it, it's amazing that he was able to pick up that slack and, and allow you to, to be exhausted 
on some of those days, but, you know, to, to also, you know, continue to be a positive force in the life of your daughter as well. Yeah. So um, very, very he's amazing. Cool. And he's our neighborhood handyman, like the whole cul-de-sac will call Rick if they need anything yeah. done. He's like the block. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Now you've obviously had challenges with, you know, the, the med spa, what have been some of the most challenging parts of opening this business? And then also, you know, conversely, what have been some of the most rewarding aspects of opening this business? So opening the business, I have yet to pay myself and I've been doing it for over a year. Um, because like I said earlier, I just keep putting money into the business. I make a little bit and I, you know, buy something I need for the business. So I've yet to pay myself. Um, but I love the texts I get from my clients and how beautiful they feel and how great they look. And I don't, when I do come in here and I work eight hours, it doesn't feel like I worked eight hours. Like, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes in anesthesia, it feels like you worked eight hours when you walk out of there. <laughs> you know, it's not like that here. I really enjoy every little bit of it. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Sometimes you work two hours and it feels like it. Exactly. <laughs> like it's only nine o'clock. What on earth? Yeah. Yeah. No, I know that feeling very well. So, uh, well now obviously, you know, med spas are kind of becoming a big thing. Um, now I'm, I'm seeing more and more CRNAs move in this direction. Where do you see the market going with that? Do you see a potential for oversaturation or do you see a market that's still just incredibly wide open with plenty of space for people? I think it's an incredibly, it has the potential to be an incredibly lucrative market. Um, I mean, looking into this, I saw the trajectory of what it was in, you know, 1985 versus 1995. And there's so many new procedures people are doing. It's not just like people in their fifties getting Botox. It's yeah. Yeah. The millennials, it's people in their twenties getting lip filler and getting, you know, replacing volume in their face as they lose it instead of, you know, having this huge facelift when they're, you know, 60. There's all these different ways to treat people and manage the aging process where it didn't exist, you know, 20 years ago. I, I think it's it's gonna double, triple, quadruple, even what it is now. Mm -hmm. That's and and it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, obviously there's tremendous interest in the anesthesia community, and and CRNAs are uniquely equipped to be able to provide this service. Um, yeah, are the other synergistic services also growing as well alongside you? Is that what you're seeing right now? Um, well, you mean like my partner? What yeah, your did? partners and yeah. Yeah, I mean, people do self-care. They love facials. They love, and we focus on results-driven treatments. So everything we do, you're going to get a result or a benefit from it. It's not just like a fluff in the massage kind of facial. So, I mean, people are always trying to turn back the clock. You know, once you hit your thirties, you start seeing all the sun damage you got in your twenties and, mm. you know, like if you smoked and all just the, the rough lifestyles and people don't like it and we have a way to fix it. And so, I mean, yeah. people pay a lot of money to get, get looking good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they spend, you know, a lot of people spend plenty of money on diet pills or, you know, whatever the case to, to try and, you know, hold on to their youth or hold on to their health at the very least. And so uh, this is certainly just another aspect of that. So now what, you know, if somebody comes to you and they're, they're asking about what you do and, and how they can get into it, what, what's your, your, you know, best advice for, for folks that are looking to get into this business? I do get a lot of people that reach out to me. Um, so there's a few ways you can get hired on somewhere as an injector and they teach you um, on the job training, as I mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. um, or you can seek out your own training. There's private training uh, offered across the country. Um, I still like praise Kelly Herman. She's the one to go to, especially if you're a CRNA. Um, 
she's really the one to show you how to build and to grow a business like this. Um, what was that other part of the question? Just, you know, what advice you have for people wanting to get in, you know, mm -hmm. wanting to, to look into this business and figure out if it's for them. I would definitely don't do it for the money. Um, Cause you never know. You can put, I, like I said, I put a year of blood, sweat and tears in it and I had made no money. Mm -hmm. um, but that's my choice to, to just keep building the business. Who's to say what's going to happen in five years, but mm -hmm. you really need to, in order to start your own business, you have to love it. It has to be your baby that you take care of and you raise and you, you know, look after morning yeah. and night. I mean, it's just, you, there's no time off. There's always something to be done. Understood. Yeah. I like that. That's, that's how I feel about my own business. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, definitely, I, not a whole lot of difference in, in, you know, the entrepreneurial spirit there. Uh, you, exactly. you definitely, you know, you got to take care of, of your business because it, it, it's a reflection of you, but it's also, you know, like that's, if you don't have passion for what you're doing, then it, it comes through as well. Mm -hmm. So, and especially when you're just starting, I mean, I own the business. I'm the injector for the business. I'm the secretary. I answer the phones. I'm the housekeeper. I'm the, mm -hmm. the fixer, the everything. I mean, you have to do all of it. I'm the, well, I just hired an accountant because I couldn't handle that anymore. Um, but you know, you have to do everything to really yeah. like save on your overhead while you're building. Yeah. So you mentioned, you know, that you hire an accountant. What are the, what are the different pain points that you could maybe hire out? It, you know, once you get going, what, what would kind of be that order that you're looking at? Like, obviously accountant was number one, you hired that mm -hmm. out. What would yeah. you look at? Oh, definitely a front desk person. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe like slash an assistant. Um, cause so often I'm in the treatment room with a client and then my next client comes and we keep the doors locked all the time, especially if there's just one of us here. So you ring the bell and then we go answer the door. Um, but that's frustrating, especially when you have 10 clients in a day. So mm -hmm. I would love to have a front desk person that will happen eventually. Um, I would love to have like a medical assistant to like turn my rooms over or someone to do all my paperwork ahead of time, um, take pictures, all that stuff. That would really take a huge weight off. Cool. But one you, day I will. Yeah. You got the list. It sounds like you got the <laughs> list ready to go. So exactly. yeah, once you get going enough, you can start checking them off. And I, I hire out my husband, not that I pay him anything, but he was just <laughs> here the other day after my surgery, I had to come in. I had to meet with a rep. I had um, a wound vac on, six JP grains, and I had him drive me here so I could meet with a rep. And then I had him sit and do my inventory for me because I couldn't do it. Um, so he, I mean, he's always willing to pitch in and, and help me when I need it, man, man. Well, I, I tell you, you, you are, you have shown a, a perseverance that, that few others have shown that's uh amazing commitment to your clients and to your business. I I'm, I'm very, very impressed with, with everything that you've done, uh, Crystal. And I just, uh, I, I want to give chance, uh, people a chance to get a hold of you. How can they do that? Uh, they can reach me on social. I am uh, at STL underscore injector on Instagram. I'm Crystal Alver on Facebook. And then the business is aesthetically pleasing. Um, and that's about it. You can call me uh, for an appointment 314-492-3067 or check out my website, which is APSTLMedSpa.com. Very cool. Awesome. Well, it, it's, it's just so clear. You've worked so hard for, for what you've, you've built and you're still working hard to continue building it. And your perseverance is just second to none. So it's such an inspiration. I want to thank you so, so much for sharing this time with me today, Crystal. Thank you. Thank you so much. I was happy to share. I don't know about you, but I have low energy days where I'm tired and unmotivated and it would be easy for me to say, look, Crystal built all of this while going through cancer treatment. So what's your excuse? And that might motivate me through guilt to get off of Netflix and start pursuing my dreams or start doing something for my business. But I think that the larger lesson here 
is that Crystal's purpose in life is bigger than the adversity she's currently facing. She really showed me that sometimes you have to tap into your why to make it through the tough times. Crystal's had chemo, radiation, and surgeries that she's had to deal with. She's had to handle insurance issues and therapy treatments. And she's making it through these challenges with the idea that she's helping people and building a business that she can be proud of. When was the last time you really examined your own why? I don't mean the surface level of, you know, I'm doing this for family or, or, you know, a fancy vacation. I mean, really digging into what it is that inspires you. I mean, you never know. Like Crystal, it might save your life. That's going to do it for the show today. I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to listen in, and I hope that you're as inspired as I am by Crystal's story. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of the Plan B CRNA podcast. If you haven't already subscribed and reviewed the show, I'd be honored if you took the extra time. It really helps to expand our reach and get the word out about the show. If you're a CRNA who is interested in sharing your story on our podcast, I'd love to have you. Please email me at bobby at oncallinvestments.com for more information. This episode was brought to you by On Call Capital. They are dedicated to helping providers like you develop passive income and generational wealth through investments in the apartment and alternative investment spaces. Feel free to check out their website at www.oncallinvestments.com and subscribe to their free educational email series. You can find On Call Capital on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also check out our YouTube page, where you'll find all of the show episodes along with other educational videos. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.